I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think the best way to pick and choose and decide on who's the best candidate to get my vote or anybody's vote for that matter is a vote based on policy, a vote based on policy, past performance, proven track record, history and their plan and their strategy for the coming administration. Their, the term that they're going to serve as president or whatever elected official seat that they hold, whether it be president, United States, vice president, the Senate, House of Representatives, any political elected official should earn their vote from tried and true methods of campaigning promises and delivering. And I've got a clear case proof. We bring receipts, folks, of exactly that happening right now in this democracy. Or is it really a republic? You guys be the judge. Let me know in the comment section. But we're going to shift our focus to the latest here, and they seem to be a little bit slow, a little bit late, where ABC3, the, this news station is a little bit slow, they're behind, and they're bringing up something that happened a few days ago. And in fact, it is Democratic presidential nominee Kamala, or I'm gonna call it Kamala, or Kamala. So we got Kamala, Kamala, or Kamala. And the reason why I'm doing it, I'm gonna tell you guys in just a second. Kamala Harris told a crowd of supporters Saturday, in Las Vegas that she supports the elimination of taxes on tips for hospitality and service workers, a significant issue for many culinary workers. And the reason why this is so important is because essentially Kamala Harris agrees with policy, agrees with campaign promise of which Trump has presented a list of 20 campaign promises. She agrees with it. And that's why she's mentioning it at this Las Vegas rally. So if it's such a great idea, then odds are Kamala Harris is going to vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> she's going to begin to steal more and more of Donald Trump's campaign strategy, his mindset, his logic, his proposals, his plan, his project. I joke with you guys, but I expect Kamala Harris to come out and reveal that she's actually behind Project 2025 and it's actually a good thing instead of the bad thing that the left was trying to use to drag Donald Trump under the bus as we've all realized that everything that the left has done to try and discredit and reduce Donald Trump's effectiveness has ultimately backfired and made him even more popular. Even Tucker Carlson says it himself. They called him names. He won anyway. They impeached him twice on ridiculous pretenses. They it, it, fabricated a lot about what happened on January 6th in order to impeach him again. It didn't work. He came back. Then they indicted him. It didn't work. He became more popular. Then they indicted him three more times. And every single time his popularity rose. So if you begin with criticism, then you go to protest, then you go to impeachment, now you go to indictment, and none of them work. What's next? I mean, let, you know, graph it out, man. We're speeding toward assassination, obviously, and no one will say that, but I don't, I don't know how you can't reach that conclusion. You know what I mean? Like, they have decided, permanent Washington, both parties have decided that there's something about Trump that's, that's so threatening to them, they just can't have him. Granted, this has pushed the Democrats into this area of extreme desperation. And we do need to be very careful and keep a watchful eye on them and be protective of our warrior president. But God is on his side. Ironically, Tucker Carlson mentions both parties are guilty and want to see Donald Trump eliminated not just lose, they want to see him eliminated because Donald Trump embodies this MAGA, this MAGA principle, this MAGA, this MAGA aura that's just permeates like to any and everybody around him. And they see that as a problem because Democrats are, they're not capable. And some Republicans are not capable of producing such a passionate response from supporters worldwide okay worldwide 
And we do have Republicans in name only that uh, that's how we end up with folks on both sides. So that's my thought. That's my take opinion on what was shared from Tucker Carlson. Um, moving back to Kamala or Kamala, this is weird. This is just weird because Alex Jones, he shares this on X, which will be on X later today because Donald Trump's going to make his official return with his live stream, live stream with Elon Musk tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern. So it'll be seven central our time. I'm going to see if I can simulcast it. Should be a lot of fun. Alex Jones says, oh, crap. They've put the face diapers back on round two of monkeypox incoming and Kamala Harris, he shows here, re reposting this from I Love American News. Kamala Harris kisses her husband with masks on. These people are total lunatics. LOL. Hashtag Trump 2024. I couldn't vote for a crazy person. There's no way I could vote for a crazy person. I couldn't do it. And if you guys haven't seen this one, you need to know your parasites. It says uh, you got a deer tick, you got a dog tick, you got a wood tick, and then you got a lunatic. <laughs> oh, man. Um, moving on. Here's a quick glimpse of a burning city. This is actually, in fact, Tim Walls is burning city. The VP selection for Kamala Harris and the Harris Walls campaign that is essentially going to then burn America to the ground. They are going to tell you that they uh, align with and want to execute on the campaign promises of Donald J. Trump. They want to steal the thunder they want to steal the show they want to steal all the attention away from donald trump they want to try to steal voters away they want to steal everything so much so that they've resorted to faking it until they can make it and getting the media on their side with ai generated images and photos and videos that present a picture of popularity and intense insanely huge crowds supporting Kamala Harris which in fact they actually aren't real they're not there and the only reason why anybody even showed up is because they were either paid to do so or they were enticed with a free concert or a free meal or some sort of compensation in exchange for them pretending to give two shits about Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. It's even so bad now that Forbes posted this on X and it says Trump falsely claims Kamala Harris's rally crowd was fake and AI generated. Ah, Forbes, I used to value Forbes and I used to state and share some of their stories and headlines with integrity and respect. Yeah, just lost all of that. Probably will never do that again. There is undeniable, irrefutable evidence that the crowd was fake. How about maybe, just maybe, the Harris campaign providing evidence that the crowd was real? How about that? Let alone the standpoint of a national security issue and allowing the crowd to be so close to Air Force Two and limiting the ability for a, a, a quick and swift fast exit in case of the event of some threat on the VP Democratic nominee, presidential nominee's life, unless maybe they want that to happen. Hmm. We got rhinos. I wonder if there's dinos. I wonder if there's Democrats in name only also, and they would want to see Kamala Harris. But let me know in the comments, do you guys believe that Kamala Harris actually drew that large of a crowd that day on the tarmac in that hangar? Or do you believe that she didn't and the images and videos that are shared have been altered? Just curious. I dread doing this, but it's probably worth a listen. This is Tim Walls and his account after week one done, and it was one for the history books, he says. Some thoughts from the road. Hey everybody, Tim Walls here. Well not a normal week, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, started out missing a call from the vice president, pretty important one, uh, 
and then got that call and, and honored to join the ticket with Kamala Harris to take us in a great direction. Uh, after that, it has been a whirlwind. We got on a plane and we flew to Philly and they told me that in an hour I'd be giving a speech and there'd be a teleprompter, something I had never used in my life. So I'm certainly terrified, um, but was lifted up by the folks in Philly. My goodness, there is so much energy. There is so much positivity. And then to watch Vice President Harris just deliver this, this joyous message, this one that everybody's included, that the democracy is strong when everybody gets to participate. Took that to uh, Western Wisconsin to a field that felt a little closer to home with a whole bunch of folks, a joy there. Went to Detroit, uh, talked about Motown a bit, and then uh, and then saw 15,000 folks decide they want to take this country in a direction that everybody does matter. Uh, out here in uh, in Phoenix and Las Vegas, same thing. Record crowds of people uh, gathering, and, and they're joining us for one simple reason. They, they love the democracy, and they love this country, and as Vice President Harris says, they believe in the promise of America. So we're just getting this thing started, but it is off and running. So uh, follow along, get involved, uh, make an effort to talk to somebody about a positive vision of this country that we all know is there, and uh, we'll see you out on the trail. So much contradiction, so much hypocrisy in all that he said. I'll let you guys tear it apart. But one thing that I noticed is that, good Lord Jesus, this dude does not age well. He looks like he's about 85 years old. And uh, he doesn't look presidential to me. Does that, does, that, does that matter? Does that matter to you? But more importantly, uh, that to me is really, really something that I would want to consider from the standpoint of he would be president if elected Kamala Harris as president Tim Walls is VP and something were to happen to Kamala Harris or Kamala Harris and he would then in turn become the, the president, de facto president of the United States of America. And think about it from that standpoint. If we had to run Tim Walls against J.D. Vance for president right now, who would you vote for? What about that? Side note, I'm saying Kamala, 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 I'm coming up with these different, I'm trying to pronounce Kamala, Kamala, Kamala's name differently to see how it picks up because AI refuses to caption her name correctly. It's either KLA or something else. It's just, they, uh, somehow the powers that be have gone in and memory hold AI's ability to caption and, and subtitle her name all of a sudden. I don't know why, I have no clue. I don't know, but we got a video here. We got a little short clip and this is actually not related to politics. Uh, in fact, I guess maybe it is just a little bit, you know, LeBron James has been very vocal about his political stance and uh, a lot of different choices and decisions. I think moving to California, you know, uh, getting involved in Hollywood, he turned his back on Akron twice and, uh, yeah, so I think that he's definitely, you know, he's in the club and he's all about the money and he doesn't really give a shit about his fans. He doesn't give a shit about you, me, people that have gotten him to be in this position because without fans, he wouldn't be able to be paid his ridiculously high multi-million dollar salary because there's no butts to put in the seats. There's no customers to buy his expensive sneakers and clothes or whatever. So I don't know where this is. Maybe this is in Paris, I guess, for the Olympics, which is, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Um, but I feel like this is an accurate representation of exactly how you should feel after you vote for the Democrats, after you vote for Kamala, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, and they get elected to be president and vice president, and then you see them, and then they basically tell you to fuck off. They're, you're, you're dead to them. They don't need you anymore. We'll see you again in four years. I think this is a pretty accurate representation of literally shitting on the exact same people who helped get you to where you needed and wanted to be and where you are today, and showing no consideration whatsoever for everybody, as Tim Walls would say, everybody. But hey, that's just my take. You guys don't have to agree with me. Uh, you definitely don't have to agree with me on the possibility, the rumors that are floating around on Tim Walls' resignation. Will he resign? Do you wanna see Tim Walls resign? 
And so I think that this is maybe a little bit of a double entendre, like a play on words here from the standpoint of maybe Tim Walls is going to resign from his VP role. Maybe, maybe Tim Walls is going to resign from his governor role in Minnesota. Maybe, maybe it's in response to his resignation or quitting from his post, his duties and his service after criticism from his ex-battalion leader and John Cobb sparking rumors, uh, J.D. Vance and Dana Bash and so many other folks really, really drilling down and getting deep in into the woods on this or just this beard vet on X saying that I'm calling for the immediate resignation of Governor Tim Walls from the state of Minnesota for violating the Stolen Valor Act. Maybe that's what the resignation is about. But who knows? Anything's possible. Uh, the day is still young. It's early. It's Monday. So in theory, we should probably hear some. We should probably get a lot of different things happening today. But I think Congress is still on vacation. Joe Biden's probably still at the beach riding his bicycle. Uh, Kamala Harris is so busy, she can't take time to talk to her reporters or have sit down interviews. And um, yeah, so there's that. <laughs> it's a crazy world out there, folks. It's a shit show. It's a clown world. This is the banana republic that Donald Trump told us about. He warned us about. But I'm going to I'm going to stay positive. I'm going to stay confident. I'm going to continue to fight the good fight and continue to push this forward. And I tell you what, let's end on a high note. Let's end on a high note. Laura Loomer, which I don't know who Laura Loomer is, but she is all over it. She is a beast. And uh, I think that's her right there. Trump. I will keep our sons and daughters safe. Yeah. This, I think it's important to keep them safe from the government, from this ridiculous idea that our sons need to become our daughters and our daughters need to become our sons. Not the case. Not the case. But either way, Laura Loomer, she actually shared this. So this is important. 20 core promises that President Trump has made to make America great again. And you can find this on her ex. You can find this on the Donald J. Trump website. Something you can't find on the Kamala Harris website are her promises. And if we then begin to see these promises here, these 20 promises shifting over to the Kamala Harris website, then you know exactly where they came from. And number one is to seal the border and stop the migrant invasion, which ironically was the job of the border czar, but I don't know who the border czar is or was or if there ever was one. So I guess that's why the border is not sealed. Number two, carry out the largest deportation operation in American history. Yeah, some of these folks need to go. But according to the Tim Walls book uh, philosophy, everybody needs to be here. Really? Everybody. Everybody. Right. Number three. End inflation and make America affordable again. I guess that also falls in line with no tax on tips and trying to put more money into the people's pockets, which Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris is all over, right? <laughs> the Inflation Reduction Act that Biden signed in many, many years ago uh, hasn't actually reduced inflation. So, yeah. Um, I guess maybe they just haven't quite figured it out yet, but I would be willing to bet and putting aside these claims and speculation that people trust Donald Trump with the economy less than they trust Kamala Harris with the economy. Mind blowing. Biden claimed that he, he cured the economy and that's what his legacy should be. And even Kamala talks about the fact that Bidenomics is working. Bidenomics is working. I've got it 23 July, August, August, August 23. Bidenomics is working. This is all Kamala Harris. Don't tell me she's not a part of it. She's promoting Bidenomics. And when they ask her whether or not Biden's spending, and by the way, she broke the tie vote with the American Rescue Plan. And within one month, 
the uh, inflation went up. I think it was 1.4 percent. Oh, it went to it was under three for 111 months straight. They signed the American Rescue Plan. Inflation in one month went up to 4.2 percent. But she's asked whether or not Biden's spending is going to create problems. And she said, well, prices have gone up. Bread costs more. But we have to understand what that means. Gas costs more. And we take it very seriously, very seriously, very seriously. That's her answer. OK. And at the end of the day, what they want to do, they want to double the capital gains tax. They want to re-regulate everything that Trump deregulated. And she wants to tax unrealized capital gains. I mean, forget it. They don't have anything to do with a successful economy. And that's why people don't trust them. All America Economic Survey finds former President Donald Trump holding a commanding lead among voters on key economic issues. But he's ahead of Vice President Kamala Harris by just two points in the head to head race for the White House. Trump led Biden by 45 to 43 in the July NBC News survey. The CNBC August poll finds Trump leading Harris by 48, 46, or the same two points, and within the polls, 3.1% margin of error. Yes. But I would probably want the advice of a rich, wealthy billionaire who didn't take a paycheck his entire term as president, who has the ability to put up a half a billion dollar cash bond for a ridiculous court ruling, who can fund his entire campaign on his own. I would want to take his advice before I took the advice of a woman who chooses to wear a $62,000 necklace on TV while asking for donations. Crazy stuff. Yeah. It's almost like taking advice from some guy on the internet on retirement and savings and investing advice and you have no clue who this person is. Or better yet, this one that I saw this morning of someone who has a YouTube channel and is on TikTok and provides financial advice, I guess, it seems, or maybe not. Maybe it's just more of how everybody's broke and how everybody's going to remain broke under the Biden administration, the soon to be Kamala Harris administration, or quite possibly maybe future Kamala Harris, Kamala administration with Kamala Nomics. Hey, I met Chicken Guy and uh I'm at Guy Fieri's place, or Fieri. You know, it depends on who you, how you spell it and how you say it. But swear to God, two chicken sandwiches, two waters, 70 fucking dollars. Fuck this guy. Oh, by the way, you want sauces on your thing? It's, they're a dollar a piece. Fuck you, guy. Go fuck yourself, you fat fuck. These places are closing left and right. This guy's a complete piece of shit. Go fuck yourself, guy. How about that? Am I making my point? Good. Fuck this guy. But I don't know if I would take financial and investment advice from somebody who spends $70 on a chicken sandwich. That's just me, though. But either way, number four, make America the dominant energy producer in the world by far. And this is stemming from the statement of Donald Trump that gets twisted. You know, it gets misrepresented. It gets um, misquoted. Short, shorted, short-sighted of being a dictator on day one. And part of that included uh, closing the border and becoming energy dependent. Drill, baby, drill. If you know, you know, right? Number five, stop outsourcing and turning the United States into manufacturing superpower. How many of you would love that to happen? If we stop outsourcing and we turn the United States into a manufacturing superpower, guess what? More jobs, more money, more opportunity, better life. Simple, easy. Number six, large tax cuts for workers and no tax on tips. Boom. Number seven, defend our Constitution, our Bill of Rights and our fundamental freedoms, including freedom of speech, freedom of religion and the right to keep and bear arms. I love my two way. I love I love my president who loves my two way as well. Not someone who says that they will, by executive order, illegally confiscate and ban all firearms. Not about that life. That's probably one that I would go down for, if you know what I mean. Number eight, prevent World War III, restore peace in Europe and in the Middle East, and build a great Iron Dome missile defense shield over our entire country 
all made in America, which is really ironic, but it's actually sound and prudent preparation for the future because I would believe that under the Trump administration, under the MAGA administration, because I think that the MAGA administration needs to live on because Trump becomes president now, this will be his final term. Even if Trump doesn't become president, he may not run again to become president. So in essence, we've got a window, a small window of opportunity here for Trump. But the MAGA, the, the MAGA campaign, the MAGA principles and party, the MAGA administration should live on. And with that, we should exist in a world that is far safer, okay? Which would mean that the Iron Dome wouldn't necessarily be needed. But it's better, much like our two-way, to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. But in essence, we would need it if the Democrats somehow managed to get back into the White House and turn everything back around and upside down and ultimately putting us back in harm's way in dangerous times. So that's a good one. Number nine, in the weaponization of government against the American people, which we've seen happen. We've seen happen with Donald Trump, number one. We've seen it happen here recently with Tulsi Gabbard, number two. We've seen it happen here with Scott Ritter, number three. We're seeing it happen time and time. We've seen it happen with the Secret Service agent covering up the camera in front of the salon and barging in and, you know, just blatant, blatant disrespect, but also an abuse of power in this weaponization of government against the American people, which is all Tim Walls is about. Literally his entire campaign push, Minnesota, you guys can attest to this, bear witness, I think even the former governor of Minnesota is like, Tim Walls needs to go. Yes, he's extremely progressive. He's the most self, self-declared, self most progressive governor in the country. And you combine that with the top of the ticket, uh, Vice President Harris, who is ranked as the most liberal senator in the United States Senate. And you have an extremely progressive, some would say socialist ticket that may be a bridge too far on policy for many Americans. And the problem is, is that this weaponization of government against the American people, that's the key word, because our government now doesn't give a shit about the American people and would prefer non-Americans, non-citizens, criminals that they deem not criminal for illegally trespassing and entering into this country, breaking laws, breaking rules, committing crimes, killing people, raping women, all sorts of shit. Yeah, so that's another one. That's a good one. Put a pin in that one, number nine. Uh, 10, stop the migrant crime epidemic, demolish the foreign drug cartels, crush gang violence, and lock up violent offenders. And we've got 10 more to get from 11 to 20, but I don't want this video to be crazy long. So I'll tell you what, guys, I'll put the top 20 President Trump's 20 core promises to make America great again. I'll put them up on Patreon so you guys can go see it. It'll be 100% free, any and everybody. All you gotta do is be a member. You can be a member for free or you can choose and support and help with us in this fight and this continuation. Pick any tier. We have four tiers, make America great again. I can't do that. Uh, make America great again. We have four tiers. And there's also a free tier. So it's for everybody, okay? We appreciate you all. Thank you so much. And that's it for this video. God bless you. God bless America. MAGA 2024, Trump 47. Fight, fight, fight. I'll see you guys again soon. Maybe I'll see you guys again later tonight at 7 p.m. Central, live for the simulcast of the interview with Donald Trump and Elon Musk. Until then, you guys take care. See ya.